Holy smokes, I was just exporting this video and then another headline uh, comes across. This is now breaking. Biden is now being deemed a quote, and this is per CNN. So so I, I know a lot of you don't like CNN, but it's slamming Biden, okay? That's rare. He's being receptive. Oh my gosh, he's been stubborn all weekend. In fact, in this video, we'll talk more about how freaking stubborn this guy is. And I understand he's been that way his whole career, but... Look, <laughs> okay, sorry, I had to do that. No, no, listen, listen, uh, let's take a look at this. The private conversations with the Hill are continuing, a senior Democratic advisor told CNN, speaking on a condition of anonymity, uh, anonymity, gosh, I'm so bad at that word, to avoid alienating the campaign in the White House. He's being receptive, not as defiant as he is publicly. Duh, because he got to keep the, try to get the Biden bucks coming in. He's gone from saying Kamala can't win to do you think Kamala can win, the advisor said. It's still unclear where he's going to land, but uh, he seems to be listening. This is a huge uh, flip, and I'm so grateful that right before exporting this video, actually, I had to cancel the export to add this in, but that's okay. It, it, it takes a couple extra minutes, but it's, it's worth it because this this just came out minutes ago, and it is it just reiterates everything else that you're about to hear. Let's go. The calls for Joe Biden to drop out are increasing. And now with Adam Schiff, Nancy Pelosi, and apparently Chuck Schumer getting together and uh, trying to figure out how to pressure Joe Biden out. This is a story we've heard before. In fact, we've been hearing it probably for, well, since debate night now that, oh, Joe Biden's going to step down any day now, but Joe Biden keeps kicking the can down the road. Mostly because he says, absent an act of God, he is not stepping out, which is fine, but he's later come out to suggest, well, you know, if somebody showed me polling that suggested I was losing and another candidate would do better, I might consider stepping out. Well, Joe Biden, maybe and probably not, but maybe I could be the first one to suggest that your polling isn't doing so hot. Right now, the Real Clear Politics poll average, which averages together all of the polls, puts Donald Trump at a 2.7 percentage point lead over Biden. This is one of the largest leads we've seen uh, since about December of 2023. You can see that spread here and how it really spread uh, following the debate. So the polling data is starting to reflect changes in sentiment. Now, according to Axios, 65% of Democrats want Joe Biden to step down. I'll show you that screenshot right here. Among Democrats, black and older adults are more likely to support Biden. However, out of Democrats overall, 65% say Joe Biden, quote, should withdraw and allow his party to select a different candidate. 35% say he should continue running for president. And I would argue that nearly 100% of Republicans argue that Joe Biden should continue to run, mostly because they believe Joe Biden will be a slam dunk to beat if he stays in the race. And they're probably not wrong, though today we have had the odds of Kamala Harris being the Democratic nominee on Predict It once again flip to top Joe Biden. As you can see here, Biden's odds have collapsed and Harris's odds have really started to pick up. And it's all really started thanks to the information we've gotten this weekend, including Adam Schiff's call for Joe Biden to step down and pass the torch. Adam Schiff is, of course, the Democratic senator from California who actually promoted his Republican opponent. He used campaign money to promote his Republican opponent to prevent Katie Porter, another Democrat from being able to pull on the ticket so he could face off against the Republican and beat the Republican in California. Kind of a little bit of a sleazy tactic there, but obviously it ended up working for Adam Schiff. Now, Adam Schiff has stated the following, quote, the choice to withdraw from the campaign is President Biden's alone. A second Trump presidency will undermine the very foundation of our democracy. And I have serious concerns about whether the president can, can defeat Donald Trump in November. Now, these serious concerns 
were underscored by the following statement, which was reported by the New York Times. Take a look at this paragraph. I think if he is our nominee, this is referring to Joe Biden. So this is uh, kind of a, let's just say a little bit of a, a slammy doodle. -la. I think if he is our nominee, I think we lose, Schiff said during a meeting. And we may very well lose the Senate and, our, and lose our chance to take back the House of Representatives. So you've really got this undercurrent now. This, by the way, came from a fundraiser that uh, Adam Schiff was holding in the Hamptons. And these fundraisers are really important because this is where you're going to be able to hear the concerns of donors. And donors really matter. Fundraising really matters. It's how you drive a candidate out of office. Consider the latest FEC report, that's the Federal Elections Commission report, as reported by Politico. They reported that in the second quarter of the year, ending June 30th, the Biden Victory Fund raised $176 million, which is great. $40 million of that came from small donors, and they spent about $48 million on fundraising efforts. So they basically spent their small donor money on setting up the fundraisers, and then they could use the rest for ads or whatever. However, now they're reporting that grassroots campaigns are faltering and projections are now showing, quote, massive revisions downward for the month after the debate and donations for $200 and under have, quote, slowed significantly after the debate. This is really bad for Joe Biden. So now you're getting Adam Schiff of California, deemed to be a pretty popular voice in the Democratic Party, slamming Biden to step out, suggesting he's basically going to give us a Trump presidency, which is, again, why Republicans want Biden to stay in, because they want a Trump presidency. Uh, and there are also a lot of Democrats, mind you, who are like anybody but Biden. Please. Now, I, I know a lot of people think like, oh, okay, here's just Kevin bagging on Joe Biden again. But I'd like to give you an example of what makes me very nervous when it comes to Joe Biden. Uh, and, and it's, it's not, you know, a clip out of context or whatever, you know, that's always, that's always what, you know, people say, they're like, oh, well, they're just clipping Biden out of context, you know, you know, you can clip Trump out of context too. No, 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 no. Joe Biden has himself out of his own mouth mentioned before that the nationwide rent control policy that the White House wants to adopt will be a 5% rent limit from corporate landlords. 5% rent increases per year, presumably, you know, adjusted for CPI. So this would have helped tenants during COVID, but it really does nothing today. In fact, uh, the odds of somebody actually needing to raise rents over 5% per year, I think are very, very low, unless a landlord just didn't raise rents for 10 years. And, and then quite frankly, that's on them. So first of all, just on a policy side, I don't actually think that 5% limit really does anything. But Biden's been cheering that and he's mentioned it himself. He's cheered it himself. And so this is why I thought it was really weird when uh, Biden spoke at the NAACP, which he mispronounced at least once and mispronounced some other things as well. But whatever, we don't have to go there. It's OK, I guess. Uh, Joe Biden mentioned the following about his rent control policy. And what I want you to pay attention to is him squinting to read the teleprompter. And if you already know that the rent po control policy is a 5% rent cap limit uh, for increases, then you should be able to correct the teleprompter if it's wrong, because you use logic. You can use your memory and your brain power to correct that issue. This isn't like you, you, you didn't have any time to think about it because you can clearly see Joe Biden squinting, trying to understand what the teleprompter says. So you know he's reaching into the faculties of his brain to get an answer. His, his memory and logic should serve him that answer to help solve what the teleprompter says, but it once again fails. And this is what concerns me about having Joe Biden as a president. Listen Without in. Further, look, folks, the idea, the idea that corporate-owned housing is able to raise your rent three, four hundred bucks a month or something. Under what I'm about to announce, they can't raise it more than fifty-five dollars. That debate is taking place. <sighs> it, it you, like I played enough before. I played enough after to show you there's no there's no correcting here. 
It's three hours, 28 minutes, and 29 seconds in if you want to see it yourself live from the 115th NAACP National Convention. And it just really shows you that he's not fit to be a leader. Look, we know he's old. Like, I don't want to be the person that just puts Biden on screen and complains about how slowly he's walking up the stairs. He He's an old guy, okay? Like, that's understandable. That's fine. But when it comes to the mental capacities, I really get nervous about the capability of a president to lead in the face of aggressive leaders around the world. It makes me very scared. Anyway, this is Joe Biden who canceled his event in Vegas because he now has COVID again, which is really kind of interesting timing because it was just a few hours ago that Joe Biden said that he would drop out uh, if uh, uh, there was a medical condition that made that necessary. And then it's sort of just like magically two hours later, he has COVID. No, we don't actually think he's going to drop out because he has COVID. But uh, this was just something that he said in an interview released today. The New York Times reported this, condi- uh, this, this uh, quote today on an interview released today. They do mention that Dr. Kevin O'Connor has said that Biden is fit. Uh, to be president. However, it's worth remembering that Dr. O'Connor has been associated with business ventures of the Biden family. So a lot of folks go and say, hey, Kevin O'Connor is like totally biased. You you can't can't rely on him. He wants to keep his job in the White House. He's been politically intertwined or uh, business intertwined with businesses and the Biden family previously. So how could you rely on that? Dr. Kevin O'Connor has even been called on by uh, Congress uh, and subpoenaed by Congress. To, to essentially speak to how he could possibly judge the fitness of Biden if he has business connections to Biden. So uh, Joe Biden himself says, uh, you know, unless people come back and say there's no way you can win and prove it with polling, Biden wants to stay in. So we know he's being defiant, but he's also being kind of mean now. Uh, per the puck via Zero Hedge, There was a Zoom call before the Trump shooting this Saturday, and the feedback that was given was the following, quote, the call was even worse than the debate, one of the participants told me. This is to the reporter at Puck. He was rambling. He'd start an answer and then lose his train of thought. We've seen that before. Then would just say, whatever. He couldn't really complete an answer. I lost a ton of respect for him. Joe Biden also slammed Jason Crow, who's a representative uh, in Congress, in the House. And uh, he mentions to Crow, uh, who's an Army veteran, served three tours. Tell me something you've never done with your Bronze Star like my son. And this is a reference to uh, Biden Beau, who died uh, due to a brain tumor, which ha- some have associated to his exposure Uh, on military deployments in Kosovo. So it's kind of getting really personal now, discrediting other people's, uh, you know, efforts in the military. All right. Well, then you have Nancy Pelosi, apparently, who has been on the phone with members of Congress who, according to, and I I love actually using the New York Times here as a source because they hate Trump. Remember that the day after the Trump shooting, they had already printed the newspapers And they had a big op-ed about how Trump is bad for the country and shouldn't run. Anyway, when the New York Times says something bad about Democrats, it's probably right. But anyway, Nancy Pelosi has apparently been on the phone with members of Congress who apparently suggest that Nancy Pelosi is giving the impression that she believes Biden should exit the race. She's basically being seen as playing 3D chess. Yeah, they said 3D chess instead of 4D chess. Uh, And has been considered one of the top proponents uh, for replacing Biden or, or uh, for basically, you know, advocating for replacing Biden, uh, but behind the scenes. So she's been less public, although she did mention herself publicly that, hey, you know, if if this is an episode, fine. But if this is a condition, maybe he's got to go. So she was willing to say that publicly and honestly, good for Pelosi. So anyway, it seems like right now the pressure continues to mount on Joe Biden He's not out yet. He does have COVID right now and a medical condition has been planned. It's the seed has sort of been planted. But, uh, you know, some are saying he's been lashing out on phone calls from people who call on him to step down. Uh, Schumer's office responded 
to uh, comments that Schumer suggested maybe uh, Biden should step down. And Schumer's office suggests, hey, now we made the forceful case that maybe Biden should step down. But, uh, uh, you know, unless you hear uh, something from us, just consider it speculation. But we did uh, express the concerns that people are having and uh, we are engaging in an ongoing discussion. So to me, that kind of came across as like, hey, don't listen to any speculation. Only listen to us. And we're telling you, yes, we too are concerned about Biden. So the pressure is getting louder and heavier as the days go on. Obviously, it's taking longer and longer for Joe Biden to actually take the hint that he should step down. But with that said, here's your complete update. Biden is now going to Delaware and canceling his events uh, because he has COVID. We'll see what doctors seem to think. Uh, at the same time, there's also this belief that we might end up pushing back the nominations, the virtual roll call that is currently planned for early August. Uh, there's an August 7th Ohio deadline that they wanted to meet via a virtual roll call. And Hakeem Jeffries and Chuck Schumer are trying to delay that by about a week so they have more time to pressure Biden to step down and pick a replacement nominee, which again, the betting odds expect will be Kamala Harris. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you found this helpful, and we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye and good luck. These things that you told us here, I feel like nobody else knows about this. We'll, we'll try a little advertising and see how it goes. Congratulations, man. You have done so much. People love you. People look up to you. Kevin Pafrath there, financial analyst and YouTuber. Meet Kevin. Always great to get your take. Even though I'm a licensed financial advisor, licensed real estate broker, and becoming a stockbroker, this video is not personalized advice for you. It is not tax, legal, or otherwise personalized advice tailored to you. This video provides generalized perspective, information, and commentary. Any third-party content I show shall not be deemed endorsed by me. This video is not and shall never be deemed reasonably sufficient information for the purposes of evaluating a security or investment decision. Any links or promoted products are either paid affiliations or products or services we may benefit from. I also personally operate an actively managed ETF. I may personally hold or otherwise hold long or short positions in various securities, potentially including those mentioned in this video. However, I have no relationship to any issuer other than HouseHack, nor am I presently acting as a market maker. Make sure if you're considering investing in HouseHack to always read the PPM at HouseHack.com.